Welcome back to the Open Word Bible Study, the study that takes us inside and behind the original languages the Bible was written in. And by the way, guys, we are just one word away from reaching number 100 in the Open Word Study. So today marks number 99. And it's kind of cool because I didn't even plan it this way, but that number 99 shows up in our main text today. So keep your eyes peeled for that. The word that we're going to open together today is almighty, which is always used in reference to the Lord as we read about it through scripture. Sometimes almighty is attached to God. So we'll come across passages where we read God almighty. And then other times it is by itself, just simply the almighty. We have spent time exploring other names of the Lord through the Open Word series, but I really want to make sure that we tuck this one in and included it. Maybe in your own reading of the Bible, you've come across names, titles of God that you thought, man, it would be cool to dig in a little deeper and see what that word means uh, in, in, a, in a deeper study of it. And if that's the case, in the comments below, Put whatever that name might be, and we will try to get around to looking at that title, that name of God as well. But for now, let's check out the name Almighty in the very first reference it is found in in the Bible, and that happens to be Genesis 17.1. Let's check it out. Now, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. So there it is, the very first reference where we see the name Almighty, and it is attached to God, God Almighty. And by the way, if you didn't notice uh, it's the age of Abram, 99, that connects with the 99th word we're looking at today. But going back to this title, this name Almighty, we can see in Hebrew both God and Almighty together from right to left. You see it there on the screen. And as I read it in the Hebrew, I think many of you will find it's a very familiar sounding name. And here it is, El Shaddai. El Shaddai, God Almighty. So that first word, El, means God. And then moving over to the second part, that second word, Shaddai, that means Almighty. And so we put it together, God Almighty, El Shaddai. Now this instantly brings the picture of God's power to my mind, El Shaddai, the Almighty One, the, this God of great power. And almost always, Throughout the book of Job, that's exactly how it's used. The descriptions around it deal with this mighty God, this powerful God, every time that the reference Almighty is used. Take, for example, Job 37, verse 23, and we'll throw in verse 22 as well for context. Look at what it says. From the north comes golden splendor. Around God is awesome majesty. The Almighty, we cannot find him. He is exalted in power and he will not violate justice and abundant righteousness. So here, the Almighty is being shown in his great glory and his power. And by the way, it's in the book of Job that Shaddai, the Hebrew word for Almighty, is by far used the most throughout the Old Testament. Out of the 45 times that Shaddai appears in the Old Testament, 31 of those times is in the book of Job. <laughs> so there's a lot then where this concept of power, God's power is connected to his title Almighty. However, there's more to this name Almighty that I don't want us to miss. Listen to this quote about Shaddai from R.B. Girdlestone. The title Shaddai really indicates the fullness and riches of God's grace and would remind the Hebrew reader that from God comes every good and perfect gift, that he is never weary of pouring forth his mercies on his people and that he is more ready to give 
than they are to receive. I love that last part of the quote, especially that God is always more ready to give than we are to receive. I know that's true in my life because the receiving takes faith, right? It's, it's trusting God's words. And I see him abundantly giving so many promises, giving so much grace and it takes me a while to catch up with that. And, and he, there he is just pouring out more and more. So Shaddai, that title speaks to God's abundance, his riches of goodness and grace, that grace giving us what we don't deserve. Well, returning to the text that we started with today, Genesis 17, 1, we will find that the verses that follow verse 1 are filled with a, the very picture of what that quote was talking about. God giving his, his riches that he has in all of his grace. And so I want us to take the time to actually go back. We're going to read verse 1 again. And then we're going to read the seven verses that follow below that. So all eight verses in one stretch. It's going to be really small print on the screen but here it is. Now, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Listen to that promise. Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you will be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall you be named Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. That name change is important because God gave him the name Abraham, meaning father of many nations. Could be a fun word to open up later. But going on with verse 6, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout the generations as an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you. And I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land where you live as a stranger, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Whew. That is a lot of promise. That is an abundance, a wealth of grace of God saying, here is what I'm going to be giving you. Look at all of the abundance of God Almighty that is filled, uh, th that fills those verses one through eight. It is this same God Almighty who not only faithfully gave and fulfilled all of those promises to Abraham, but who has also given his son Jesus to you and to me in order that we can experience eternal grace, that giving of God that just keeps giving. What could only come, could only be given through the power and the wealth of goodness that is attached to God Almighty. May that name, God Almighty, El Shaddai, stand out in our reading of that name in the Bible as a monument to the power and the riches of God. I want to take that into prayer with you. Lord, we thank you so much as we've taken this time to step back and just look at your title, El Shaddai, God Almighty. It is an appropriate name for you, God, because you are powerful and because you are rich in your grace. We look again at all that you promised Abraham, and we know that those promises are attached to you, Jesus, and, and some of their ultimate fulfillment is through you. And so we have seen you faithfully bring those promises into fulfillment, and we know that there's still more of that even for us to witness, and you are good for it, Lord. What you promise, you are faithful to fulfill. You, God Almighty, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. In your name, Jesus, amen. Well, listen up. Next Thursday, 
there's not going to be a new open word. We're going to take one week off, all right? Which means that you might want to go back and look at one of the open words that you haven't looked at yet. You have 99 of them to choose from after this study, right? So there's plenty to choose from. Uh, maybe there's a different study entirely that you want to check out and take the time to do that. That would be great. But then we're coming back with a new word on July 28th. That's a Thursday, two Thursdays out from now. And that will mark word number 100. So I'm looking very forward to presenting what that word is and taking time to open that with you. Until then, shalom in Christ.